Fire, fire flames, fire, flames, fire, burning, burning flames. Fire, Somebody fire, please fire, save fire, my fire, baby! Don't worry, ma'am. Your local firefighting robot is here. Oh, thank God! Please hurry! Did you save her? Please tell me you saved my Abigail! Even better. I saved her two hamsters. Wh what? I was programmed to obey Jeremy Bentham's utilitarian ethics, which state that morally good acts are those that maximize happiness and minimize suffering without prejudice to race, species, or gender. Fire, flames, Bashed, flames, building collapse flames, noises, flames, building flames, collapse, fire, fire. Abigail, no! This was the morally correct decision. Has this ever happened to you? God, I hope not. Greetings, children. Welcome back to AI is Bad and Scary and We're All Gonna Die with your host, Silly Conversations. The development of firefighting robots will probably save thousands of lives each year, since they can be sent into situations that are simply too dangerous for human firefighters, easily withstanding high temperatures and the complete absence of oxygen. However, unless we want to intentionally make them slower and less reliable with a remote controlling human operator, we'll need to explicitly program these robots with a hierarchy of human lives who to save first. If it has to choose, should a robot save one child or two elderly people? On the one hand, it feels wrong to say that any one person's life is worth twice as much as anyone else's. On the other hand, the total number of extra years lived will probably be greater if you save the child. What if the fire was at a hospital and the choice was between two terminally ill patients with only a few weeks left to live and a healthy child who just came in for a checkup. It definitely feels wrong to throw away the many decades that that child could have lived so that those two adults can have a few extra weeks. These examples are a small subset of the larger problem facing the emerging field of AI ethics. The fact that human ethics has been a complete mess for thousands of years where no one can agree on anything. Slavery, for example, is a natural part of society. A matter of personal opinion and economic necessity. Illegal. Illegal always and everywhere, except sometimes for prisoners. Killing people and taking their stuff is definitely wrong, unless your government really doesn't like their government. In which case, it's national liberation. Utilitarianism, the philosophy that would have us prioritize two hamsters over one human child, is not only a real philosophy, it's one of the most popular non-religious ethical frameworks in the modern world. There are many people who genuinely believe that the life of two hamsters should outweigh that of a human child. Even if you apply a restricted form of utilitarianism, where only human happiness matters, you end up with consequences that feel repulsive to most people. For example, the lives of happy people would in theory be worth more than the lives of people with chronic depression, even if they both express an equal desire to live. If one joyful John feels more happiness than 100 depressed Darrells combined, then John's life is more worth saving for a utilitarian firefighting robot. And if you really want to minimize suffering, why wait for a fire to take out the Darrells when we can take matters into our own hands? Self-driving cars are another technology that will eventually force us to program solutions to uncomfortable ethical dilemmas. If a car crash is inevitable, should the car prioritize protecting its owner or reducing the total amount of harm? Would you get in a self-driving car that would drive off a bridge to avoid hitting a school bus? Or say the car has to choose between crashing into a cyclist wearing a helmet and a cyclist not wearing a helmet. The cyclist wearing the helmet is more protected and more likely to survive if you hit them, but then you're punishing people for taking reasonable safety precautions. If news gets out that self-driving cars are intentionally targeting cyclists who wear helmets, people will probably stop wearing them, and then you might get more road deaths overall than if you had just hit that one reckless idiot in the first place. But good luck being the CEO of a car company who has to explain that to a jury. The ultimate problem in AI ethics is how to program a super-intelligent AI that's too smart to be controlled by force. We need its goals to align perfectly with the interests of humanity, because once it's out of the box, we can't put it back in. Maybe it'll terraform Mars, end global warming, and build an army of spaceships to defend us from alien invasion. Maybe it'll decide that the best way to maximize happiness is by trapping everyone in VR video games and pumping us full of heroin. Or maybe it'll decide to end all suffering forever by eliminating life on Earth and turning itself off. Personally, I'm a human supremacist. I believe that morally good actions are those that benefit humanity, with humanity being defined as the social group emergent from freely interacting homo sapiens, and benefit being defined as our long-term survival and expansion. But that is a story for another time. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe so that the YouTube gods will smile upon this video. I'm new to this long-form content thing, so if you have any feedback on how I can improve or thoughts on the video's content, 
Let me know in the comments. Bye for now.